Hello and welcome. I want to talk in this video regarding male isolation. So men are socialized to exist in a state of constant deprivation. And their suffering is dismissed, their vulnerability is mocked, and their formative years are they're marred by violence. And the first act of violence perpetrated against the male is circumcision. And it's a barbaric assault on male infants that leaves even deeper psychological scars, as many men who have experienced this can attest to. The second wound is effectively an emotional castration. The male emotions, they're stamped out to essentially fulfill the social demands expected of men. And it can be seen as a tribal imperative you know, to separate men from their emotions. And their responsibilities are to the tribe, and their role is one of protector and provider. And any male that fails to adhere to or live up to this expectation is outcast. And it's this lack of empathy and understanding for males that essentially leads to the absence of any real support network for men. And from this point, the male experiences the isolation. He dismisses his own needs, he doesn't seek help, as that help brings with it judgement, and a heavy dose of guilt and personal failure for having given voice to his vulnerabilities. And this repressed pain is then expressed in a number of damaging and often lethal ways. And if we sought a reliable gauge to assess the level of satisfaction that men derive from their lives. I mean, we need only look at the suicide rates globally. In Western countries, the, the suicide ratio of male to female is 4 to 1. In Eastern countries, it's as high as 7 to 1. And of course, that's excluding male road deaths, excluding overdoses, or the slow burner effect. The title given to men who effectively drink themselves or self-medicate to the point where the body ceases to function. And a whole myriad of other ways that men destroy themselves to escape their pain. And all this increased social pressure, this lack of social ties, and the lack of employment or lack of mating prospects, it makes it very difficult for men to live up to the societal roles expected of them. Now, looking at the bigger picture, with declining birth rates, declining marriage rates, the growing unemployment, uh, and the economy that's on the downturn. I mean, we're looking at a society that can only leave more and more people disconnected and isolated. And the old excuse that, uh, that men kill themselves because they don't seek help, it's, it's redundant. And this loss of community, it can't be resolved through therapy. It, this is a much broader issue. And men who, who exhibit vulnerability, they're viewed with disdain, they're viewed with open contempt. So being isolated can often be the safer option for a man. And this anger and frustration that men feel, it's due to men having no other frame of reference. And most men, they, they never experience true autonomy over their lives. The majority, they go from the coddling arms of their mother to a wife, or from relationship to relationship, without ever truly experiencing independence. And developmentally, they suffer too. And it's very sad to see a man who, who divorces or breaks up with the woman. You see how poorly they cope as this woman was, unfortunately, their only friend. They were his world. And men, they're, they're shamed into marriage by, by playing on this fear of, you'll die alone. And by the shaming language, uh, stating that a man who doesn't marry is immature. <laughs> and this is just gender role, role reversal. It's to get men to conform to a feminist ideal that benefits women only. Yeah, a woman gets a beta provider at the age of 30 after she's had her fun. <laughs> yeah, a guy literally so brainwashed 
he believes he's manning up and ducking a bullet if he commits to a woman like this. These men, they lack insight. They lack insight into how society perceives them. And also they lack insight into the female mindset. So they keep falling into the same trap. Hence why the suicide rate for married men is so high. And males, they're, they're taught from boyhood to repress their emotions, to be tough, to be hard, to never ask for help. And there's no brotherhood between men anymore. And men are raised to hate themselves and to hate other men. And society hammers these messages into young males. Men, they have no support networks or male role models. And like I say, uh, most men find they can only confide in women. <laughs> and even then, it's in a very condensed, very limited way, where females' interests and expectations are given precedence. But the advancement of society, it was due to male cooperation, and due to a mutual respect between men. Your fathers and male role models were integral in the raising of men to become productive members of society. And fathers, they were revered, they were respected. And children benefited from the active role that fathers played in their lives. But modern society, it's, it's ripped men away from the family unit. And mothers are <laughs> they're deemed as the only true nurturers of children now. You know, despite the fact that this epidemic of single motherhood has wreaked havoc on society, evidenced by all the social ills we see today. In society, it views depression as a female condition. And men don't receive a diagnosis of depression unless female symptoms are evident. <laughs> so it's no mystery why the vast majority of severely depressed men go undiagnosed and are turned away or told in a not-so-subtle fashion to bite the bullet and man up. And of course, male and female behaviour and psychology, they're different. Yet you know, women reach out, men withdraw, men act out. And acting out, it has a negative connotation to it, but in terms of behaviour, men hide their depression by engaging in activities that will preoccupy or distract them, in the hopes of numbing their pain. But again, in terms of treatment, the message is loud and clear that if men want help, they should be more like women. <laughs> it's the equivalent of telling someone that if they want help, they should first change their skin colour. In statistics, they conceal the fact that the majority of suicides are male. <laughs> to the point that the stats are referred to in a gender-neutral way. And the resources, they are not there for men. And it's the same story with, with male victims of domestic violence, or fathers who are ripped away from their children. Society doesn't care, and they're far more comfortable just in passing the buck. And these rigid social expectations on men, and the constant barrage of shaming tactics employed against males, now, combined with the lack of support structures, and a society that openly invalidates a male's existence for failing to conform is a reason why male suicide rates are at such levels and growing. Now, if the suicide rates are 4 to 1 for men now, what will they be in 10 years? And how many more young men will disengage from society and from the education sector due to a lack of male role models? How much more damage is it, will society be subjected to from this epidemic of single motherhood? How many more crimes, teen pregnancies, suicides, dropouts, murderers, rapists uh, are we going to see emerging from this wreckage? And unrealistic social expectations, they're, they're only, only increasing for males, yeah, while the opportunities for men are decreasing. And there's no shame for a female to live her life dependent on a male. 
while a man has to stay a slave to the machine or face social exclusion. <laughs> of course, ironically, it's men who are the majority taxpayers, who are actually funding women's social inclusion and female-friendly support structures and privileges over men. And yes, I mean, youth suicide. It seems to receive some notice. But again, it's framed in gender-neutral terms. And the main demographic of suicides are males over 25 years of age. But these men, they're ghosts. They're disposable cogs. And right across the board, men suffer higher rates of injury, illness, death. <laughs> Yet healthcare funding for males is minimal compared to the expenditure for females. And we're not simply talking money here. We're talking service and resource provision. And again, this delivery, or, or lack thereof, is coming from a female perspective. So essentially, this model is completely inadequate in identifying and addressing the health needs of males. Even health promotion messages for males, you know, media messages, they're very poorly thought out. <laughs> and either miss the point completely, or are just plain demeaning to men. And in terms of helping men, men first need to be able to acknowledge their vulnerability. Because once a man owns that, he can address his fear and his lack of connection. And that's when a man truly feels the confidence to create change in his life. By accepting his vulnerability, he grows in strength and in self-acceptance. His, his confidence increases, and so does his capacity for introspection. And if at this point, he shakes off the shackles of societal expectation, this quite literally can be his second birth, where he effectively reassesses his life and lives by his own terms. And that to me, that's a definition of masculinity. Anyways, that's all I wanted to touch on today, but um, thank you for your time, and Happy New Year.